And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives, all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. May God bless you. This is your brother Tally, and this is basically an introduction to a couple of videos that I'm going to be doing on several things that I see going on, and I know I always bring a little bit of a crazy topic at hand, but um, it's going to start this this week uh, with a video on the propaganda that Hollywood and our government is feeding you, uh, the Vatican, uh, the Catholic Church, and many other institutions preparing people for a new world order, a coming Antichrist and quite possibly a false coming of a messiah um, so many different things that could happen off of that so uh, my goal is to warn you but before I do that I'm making this video so that I can point people back to this video when they have questions and then because one of the questions that I always get and I get it by a lot of great brothers and sisters in the Lord like Marcus Rhodes Sermons who was an amazing brother and I'm gonna put a link to his channel below the video and others um, how do we know they were fallen angels I believe they were sons of Seth and this is something that a lot of people always tell me and I'm going to explain to you why I don't believe it uh, why I believe that these were um, angelic beings uh, and so forth now one of the first things that we have to remember and it's right there in the scripture in Genesis 6 is the following it says and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them so it makes a distinction it's telling you when men regular men began to multiply on the face of the earth that daughters were born unto them now if it if it would just say that and it would continue then I could understand the sons of Seth theory the reason I'm unable to understand it and I want some of you to understand this is because of the following look what it says next that the sons of God saw that the daughters of who? The daughters of men. Are you, seeing, are you seeing that? That the sons of God saw that the daughters of men. That they were fair and they took them wives of all which they choose. Now the distinction here as well between men and the sons of God is very important. Because it doesn't say and the sons of of Seth, of the lineage of Cain, or different things like that as some people believe. It says, and the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair. Then it keeps on going forward. Um, and you can clearly see that as a result of this, uh, an offspring is generated. An offspring which is called the Nephilim. And this offspring was Satan's plan, in my humble opinion, to cause that the promise of Genesis 3.15 wouldn't fu be fulfilled. Satan was trying to prevent that. Um, just as after the flood, Satan also once again via Nimrod tried to establish a new world order and God had to intervene then. God also had to intervene at this moment because if not, the plans would have been fulfilled. Now, it goes deeper than this. Now, there's three views. One of them says that the people um, that are called sons of God in Genesis 6 are the godly descendants of Seth which intermarried with wicked descendants of Cain there's no scriptures to back that up yet this is what is being taught in a lot of seminary schools um, another one is that there were powerful rulers and another one is the position that I take is that there were fallen angels now the reason I believe that is because of the following the Old Testament phrase, sons of God, always refers to angels. Okay, How is that? Because if you look in the Hebrew, sons of God, in the Hebrew, in the original manuscripts, read it. It says, Bene Elohim. Job 1.6, Job 2.1, Job 38.7, and Genesis 2. 
So if you look at the word Bene Elohim, don't take my word for it and don't disregard it simply because you want to stay on your point of view. That's what we're trying to avoid here. We're trying to make sure that we study and that we learn and we both grow. You grow and I grow. Amen. And when I look at Bene Elohim in Job 2, look what it says. And there was a day when the sons of God, Bene Elohim, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Notice that it makes a distinction between the Bene Elohim and Satan. Okay, And the Bene Elohim, when it's telling you the story in Genesis 6, it's telling you the story that the Bene Elohim saw the daughters of men. See? It, it was calling them Bene Elohim there because that's before they actually fell. But then it tells you what happened. They took wives of all which they chose. Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God, the Bene Elohim, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Satan's such a liar, ain't he? He's always trying to bug people. Job 38.7 also talks about the Bene Elohim. Now, the sons of Seth argument is a very, very compelling argument. Okay, so I'm going to give that point to the, the brothers and sisters who believe that side. But at the same time, I have a couple of problems with it. Now, according to the thought that the fallen angels, which we believe are fallen angels, with the term sons of God, according to some, okay, and we have to respect this position because we're just discussing here, they believe that the sons of God refers to the sons of Seth and that the daughters of men is taken to mean the daughters of Cain. The union between these two lines represented an intermarriage, an intermingling of the promised seed of the woman with the cursed seed of Cain. According to this theory, the Nephilim in Genesis 6 are the fallen descendants from the line of Cain. The intermarrying between these two lines was detestable in God's sight. He thus destroyed the earth with a biblical flood. However, a number of problems exist with this theory and other ones. If the Nephilim in Genesis were, the, were descendants of Cain, why would such a union produce giants? Or men of renown. Notice that they were both human. They were both mankind according to this theory. Why would such a union between a man and a woman produce these mighty men of renown giants? In addition, why would such unions produce exceeding wickedness? Why? If it was a union amongst humans, why would God have destroyed the world? Why were their offsprings specifically named Nephilim? See, what I'm trying to explain to you is that the sons of Seth, humans, and the descendants of Cain, humans, don't produce Bene Elohims, which is the word used in Genesis 6-2. In Job as well, I'll repeat that, Job 1-6, and in Job 2-1, and in Job 38-7, Bene Elohim. Study that word. Okay? And that's basically what I wanted to tell you today because you're probably watching this video from me pointing you to it from the video series that is coming this next week. I can assure you the video series that I'm working on is going to be one that's going to help a lot of people. And I've done a lot of them already on Fallen Angels. But there's a lot of parents that write me and they ask me, my child is addicted to Twilight movies. My child is addicted to X-Men comic books. X-Men comic books. Spider-Man, um, Thor, um, Hulk, all of these things, okay, Catholics, which believe what the Vatican Church is telling them, that the Vatican even said that he's willing to baptize aliens if they come in the name of Jesus. All of these things we're going to be discussing, and it starts this weekend, possibly, hopefully, I'm going to keep on working on that video, so stay tuned, share this video, talk to your friends about it, let them know that Tally's going to come out with Another crazy topic this weekend, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Amen. And uh, may God bless you guys. Um, check out Marcus Road Sermons below on the link. Okay, he's an awesome brother. We may not agree on that, but he's an awesome brother. And um, that's it. Now you know why I uh, believe why I believe. Um, humans plus humans don't equal Bene Elohims. It just doesn't happen. So may God bless you and your family, and um, see you this weekend. Okay, God bless you guys.